we will now continue with part 5, slide 23. In this slide, we will be presented with an exercise. Think about the question that is being asked and also determine if you have the necessary formula at hand to solve it. Take your time to get what you need. Now suppose you are given autonomous consumption C bar is equal to 100. You are given autonomous investment spending equal to 200. You've got autonomous government spending equal to 300. Exports, which is also autonomous, is equal to 150. And imports, autonomous, is equal to 50. You are given the marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0, 0,9. The tax rate is 0, 0,33. And the marginal propensity to import them is equal to 0, 0,5. And the question says, calculate the equilibrium level of income. Right, so what do we need to do? In order to calculate the equilibrium level of income, we are going to use what is referred to as the general formula. That is, if we look at the very last line, where the equilibrium level of income y0, is equal to alpha, the multiplier, multiplied by the total autonomous spending components A bar. So this refers to all the autonomous spending components C bar, I bar, G bar, X bar, minus Z bar. So in order to solve using the general formula, we need to determine alpha, the multiplier, and we need to determine total autonomous spending. Alternatively, you know that from slide 20, you have two ways in order to solve this problem. You could also use the equilibrium condition where you state that y is equal to a, and you can state the aggregate spending function as being c plus i plus g plus x minus z, and then you can substitute all the components as well as their values and then rearrange to solve for y. That would be using the equilibrium condition. But like I said, the method we are using here is the multiplier or general formula. So what do we have? Firstly, we are going to calculate our total autonomous spending component. Now remember, everything with a bar is autonomous. So here we have C bar, I bar, G bar, plus X bar. And remember, imports is a leakage, which is why we have to say minus Z bar. I've got these values from the values given at the start of the question. So adding all these components, I'm going to get 700. Next, we can calculate the multiplier or alpha. And that is given by the multiplier formula. And that is 1 divided by 1 minus C in brackets 1 minus T, close bracket, plus M. Now, it is very important that you remember your bar mass. You need to do what is in the brackets first, right? So, once you substitute your values for your MPC, which is 0 0.9, there you have your MPC. Then you substitute your value for your tax rate, which is 0 0.33. And here you substitute plus M, which is your marginal propensity to import, equal to 0 0.1. We first need to solve what is in brackets. And 1 minus 0 0.33 would be equal to 0 0.67. And if we multiply 0 0.67 by 0 0.9, we are going to get 0 0.6. So therefore, it becomes 1 minus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1, which will give us 1 over. 0 0.5 which is equal to 2. As a test, see what happens if you do not solve what is in the brackets first. You will get an incorrect value for your multiplier. Now that we have our value for the multiplier equal to 2 and we have our total autonomous spending component equal to 700, you can simply say 2 multiplied by 700 is equal to 1400. Just a note of caution, we did round 
in this problem. So if you do calculate it and your answer is slightly different, it may be because we rounded during the problem. To be correct, you should technically only round at the end of a problem, but we kept it this way for simplicity. This slide is simply an, a summary of the impact that exports and imports has on the aggregate spending function A, the multiplier, as well as the equilibrium level of income. We have discussed all of these items previously in the slides, but I will just recap that exports we know is an injection and it is autonomous. Thus, it will serve to raise the level of aggregate spending A. It will leave the multiplier unchanged. And lastly, it will raise the equilibrium level of income Y0. Imports, on the other hand, we know is a leakage in the circular flow of income and spending. So it will serve to reduce the level of aggregate spending on domestic production. If we are, of course, purchasing imported goods, we are not spending on domestically produced goods. It also reduces the multiplier. We saw that the marginal propensity to import M enters the multiplier formula in the denominator. So it does affect the multiplier. And the larger M is, the smaller the multiplier will be. And lastly, imports reduce the equilibrium level of income. I zero. The final section is taken from section 7.3 in the textbook. It is also a summary of the factors that determine the size of the multi multiplier. Your three factors which you need to remember. The first is the marginal propensity to consume, the MPC or little c. And the larger the MPC is, the bigger the multiplier will be. So think about it. If the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.9, that means that only 0 0.1 would be a leakage in the form of sa savings. Whereas if it was smaller, it means a greater portion would be saved. So hence there is a positive relation in terms of the size of the MPC as well as the multiplier. The tax rate and marginal propensity to import are ever represent the leakages in the system. So the larger the tax rate, T, as well as the larger the marginal propensity to import, M, is, the smaller the multiplier will be. Remember, taxes and imports represent leakages. You could be asked in a question, to explain how your MPC, your tax rate, or your marginal propensity to import affects the multiplier. Finally, we are going to conclude chapter seven. So we just need to remind ourselves that when we are presented with questions, we need to read the questions carefully. Does the question tell you by how much the autonomous spending has changed, or does it tell you the new level of autonomous spending? Similarly, does it ask you to calculate by how much equilibrium income changes, or does it ask you what the new level of income would be after the change? In addition to the exercises covered in the slides, remember to work through the additional exercises that may be provided on ECUMBA. These exercises provide clear examples of what is expected to calculate and analyze based on chapter seven, which builds on chapter six. Remember, if you get stuck at any point, please consult your lecturer. Additional worked examples can be found in the exercise workup, workbook from pages 82 to 88. I hope you've enjoyed chapter seven. All the best.